So I think the little one could swing all day. Um, but I'm gonna do a quick summary of the Catania trip. I have some notes, so I'll keep looking to the side. And I am pushing my little one, so you're gonna see me doing other things as well. Um, he's on a swing, so pushing him on a swing, not pushing him down, in case you anyone was curious. But overall, every day, uh, we traveled there, we traveled back, of course, but then each day while we were in Catania, um, it basically looks like a training and devotion in the morning with uh, a song, prayer, and learning a little bit about what we're doing there and why, specifically to the idea of why missions, why global missions, why Catania um, for the refugee, to reach refugees, all of those things. Um, a big part of that was because um, they're coming there from all over the world and they're going back to their home countries and all over the world. Um, so it's just, it's kind of a hub, um, much like in parts of, I wanna say the book of Acts, where people from all over came and people were going all over. So that's kind of the general idea. But so we did the training and then we did, we went out in the community and got to know people, got to know the area. The first day we did a scavenger hunt and it included things like finding different shops. But, um, they always need peanut butter, it seems like. So we bought peanut butter for them, um, for the missionaries living there. And then, um, we also like they wanted they were looking for a translator for Bengali to English and so they're looking for an English-speaking Bengali um, so we found two English-speaking Bengalis and we were able to connect them on um, people that were interested in um, told them a little bit about what was going on got their numbers information gave it to the man who works there and so they are connected and so that was a really cool thing um, and each day we kind of did the same uh, then we, oh then we'd go back uh, we did lunch when we were out and we'd go back to the center and do some sort of training and then uh, maybe hang out a little bit more or go to dinner um, depending on what the time was and how many hours we were out on the streets. Sorry, I keep moving the video. Um, so each day looks kind of similar where we, we did the training, the devotions, the like, worship in the morning, and then we went out on the streets and we connected with new people, uh, made connections, shared the gospel, all of that. And then we went back and did more training and uh, either went back out again or had dinner. Um, and then the last couple days, we were connecting with people we'd already met. So we'd made plans to meet up with several different people. Um, we went out to uh, got gelato with uh, Dave, David, who we talked about. And then we also met Miriam um, for drinks. And then we looked for a couple other people in the park and talked to a couple others, um, couple, a couple from Palestine, or actually a uh, mom and a son from Palestine. So a couple people, not a couple. But um, so we got to hang out with them again and talk a little bit about them or to them. Um, we invited people to come ride bikes. Uh, it was just, it was really neat. So and a couple of the afternoons, uh, after between trainings or after trainings, I don't remember the exact order. We did go out to the center, the piazza, and um, rode crazy bikes, and they worked with them. You need a high five. You hurt? Are you done swinging? All right. So some of the things that went great about the trip were on um, connecting people. We found the people that David was looking for. Not David. Um, that Ryan was looking for. We found a couple of Bengali connections. Yeah, is that a spinning wheel? Um, David was a great connection, and then we also um, connected some people that they'd lost contact with when other missionaries left the field, and so that was really neat as well. Um, one gal from, from Sudan had been meeting with some of the people there, and then her American friends had left, and then she was kind of feeling lonely because a lot of her Sudanese friends also left and moved up north in Italy, and then we were able to reconnect her with um, the Hale family, so that was really cool. And they actually knew her, they, like she'd braided one of the daughter's hairs, one of the daughter's hair, and so that was just really cool. Um, so connections went really well. The location we stayed in was amazing. I actually have talked to the owner of the Airbnb, and he has two or three other rentals in the same downtown area that will be great for the next trips. Um, other things what, that went really well was I kept continued to practice my Hindi and Urdu. I, um, strangely enough, uh, Italy has been the only place I've actually needed it um, because we didn't have English or Italian as a common language. And so um, Hindi and Urdu practice is really good. Things I would change for next time, um, we will probably all be learning more Italian. Since the first trip we were in the refugee camps and we mostly met with English speakers and French speakers, um, we didn't really need Italian at all. Also, um, me having a decent amount of Portuguese and Spanish, and then one of, another couple, one was fluent in Spanish, one was fluent in Portuguese, the three of us were able to navigate most everything with language. So we didn't need any language skills, but we will be doing Italian for the next trip. Um, so things will change. I just said Italian, we will learn Italian better. Um, there'll be more prep time. We only had about six months to plan the trip, about five months to plan the trip to do, I think we're gonna start planning now. I'm writing this timeline, starting with what it will do this month, and then starting in April, we'll be planning for the next time. Um, we'll be doing it during Ramadan, so we'll get to see more of the celebration aspects. So Ramadan starts like now-ish, and so we missed all of that. Um, but it'd be really great to go to an iftar dinner or even see the Eid al-Fitr, fitter, Eid al-Fitr, there you go, um, those types of things as well. So that'd be a change for next time. Um, also, of course, we'd like to go into the refugee camps. That's not really a choice, but um, that's always going to be something we want to do a little bit more of. Um, 
The last thing is, oh, we'll be getting SIM cards. We will all get SIM cards. It won't be an option. We will just get SIM cards, um, period. So those are the things that um, went well, the things we changed, and kind of a little bit of an overview. But overall, it was amazing. Um, and we are looking forward to going again. So thank you so much for those of you that prayed. Um, thank you for all that you've done. Um, yes, you want up? Okay, um, <laughs> we are climbing around. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys, and thank you so much for praying. Um, continue to pray for the next trip. We're hoping to do it in about a year. It'll probably be the end of March or um, beginning of April. So about the time, same time period. Um, yeah, thanks again, take care, bye.